Everyone, the Game Chief here. Today I'm going to be doing a video on setting up the CF Tools Daisy plugin slash add-on. In this video, I'll be going over what the CF Tools Daisy plugin is and what it's used for, and I'll be showing you how to get it all set up and get it in game and working on your server. Timestamps for everything are on screen right now as well. This video is sponsored by Caliber Servers. Caliber Servers provides dedicated machines with amazing configurations such as the Ryzen 9 5950X and the Ryzen 5 5900X. Don't need that much horsepower and don't want to break the bank. They also have lower spec machines and even VPS slash KVM servers. And along with that, they also offer regular game server hosting as well. At Caliber Servers, the customer is king. All clients get direct contact with the owner via WhatsApp for emergencies. Check out their website and Discord server for more information and to find a plan that is right for you. Mention the Game Chief while ordering and use code the Game Chief for 10% off your first purchase. And don't forget to thank them for sponsoring these videos. So first off, what is the CF Tools Daisy plugin? Essentially, the plugin is a server-side add-on that can you can run on your Daisy server to collect certain data from the server for use outside of the game. You will need a control panel instance or service to do this. If you don't have one, check out my video that covers how to get one. A link to that is in the video description and on the top right hand side of your screen right now as well. The add-on is able to log player kills and deaths to calculate like a player KD. It is able to track base building. It is also able to provide a map of all player locations, vehicles, and recently placed items. And it also gives you some extra info in your control panel, such as weather along with the server FPS, which can be great to track how the server is performing. The add-on also just sends general information with that you can interact with the CF Tools API. There's a bunch of very nice advanced use cases here, but for the scope of this video, it's just going to be installing the add-on and making sure the basic features work, and there'll be some later videos down the line for some of the more advanced stuff. And to get started, we are just on the CF Tools Daisy plugin page. This tells you a bit about it, and it also tells you how to install it in a text version as well. I'll be leaving a link to this page in the description as well. Just in case some things change, it'll always be written in the text version here. So as we can see, it just tells you a little bit about it, which we've already done. And then it tells you what we have to do. We first have to add this add-on to our server. So we're gonna go ahead and remote into our server. And we'll go ahead and go to the overview of our video series one. We'll go over to mod configuration. And then we're going to search for CFDZ, and then the plugin comes up right here. So we'll go ahead and add that. And then we'll drag that over to the top. I don't think it has to be, I just prefer to keep the server side ones there. And then we're going to click on this that says client side mod to change it to be a server side mod. It's very important, you cannot have this as a client side mod. You only want this running on your server and not on everyone joining it. As we can see here, there's a couple different add-ins as well. So if you're using code lock, breaching charge, or expansion, you'll want to add these as it provides extra data as it interfaces with those mods. However, since we're not using any of these mods on our test server, we won't be adding these. But if you were, let's say you were using expansion, for example, we'll go back to our remote connection and we'll find the add-in expansion. We'll add that. We'd go ahead and drag it up there as well. It has to load after the main one, so make sure it's not above the main plugin. And we would make that a server-side mod, and then we would hit save changes. But since I don't have expansion on the server, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that, and we'll just leave the main base plugin, and we'll go ahead and hit save changes. And we'll go ahead and go back to the dashboard. And then if this is the first time that you're installing this mod, you'll need to click on install untracked mods right here. I do have this on my testing server though, so I've already technically downloaded it. So we're all good to go there. And as we can see, we have unapplied configuration. So we're gonna go ahead and do a restart to get this all going. And now that we have that stopped, before we start it, we do need to create a file that has our CF tools instance ID and our API key. So we're going to go ahead and go into our file browser here. We're going to go to servers, daisy, servers again. In my case, I'm working with server zero, so I'm going to go into zero here. And then we're going to go into the profiles folder. And then we're going to want to go ahead and create new. And we're going to create a new text document that is going to be called cftools.cfg. And this is saying that we're changing the file extension, which we do want. And now we can see cftools.cfg. We can see this is a CFG file, so a config file. And if you're not seeing the extensions here, you may want to go over to view and make sure file naming extensions are enabled. So we can go and open that up. And for now, it's just a blank file, but we can fix that real fast. So we're just going to copy and paste this. 
And then this is just a simple file. It wants the API key and it wants our service ID. So we can go ahead and minimize out of this to grab those. And now that we're on our control panel, we can go ahead and go over to this. This is the video series one. We'll click on server. And then we have our service ID. We'll copy that. We'll paste that in there. And next we have the API key. We'll go ahead and copy that. And then we'll go ahead and paste that in there. And then we'll go ahead and save it. And again, make sure the service ID is okay if people see that. However, the API key, only you want to see that because it allows it to send and receive data and do stuff like that. So make sure you're not sharing that. We'll go and close out of this. And we can close out this file browser. And we can go and start a server. And it looks like our server's back online. So we'll go ahead and open up the Daisy Standalone Launcher to go ahead and join. That way we can go ahead and do a quick test to make sure everything's working as expected. And while we're loading in, there is one setting in the control panel that we can actually change that relates to this new plugin. So we'll go over to configuration. And then on the DayZ tab, there is the kill feed. So we can enable that and this does require the plugin, of course. And this just basically says, you know, whoever, you know, person A killed person B along with what weapon they used and the distance. So we'll go ahead and save that so that'll be happening. Alrighty, and now that we are in game, we can go ahead and go back to the control panel and take a look, make sure everything's broken. So it does still show our KD is zero out of zero. I don't have anyone on, so I can't really show you the difference between the KD along with the player death messages that we just set up. However, it should be going on screen right about now when I have someone that test this out and kind of show you what that looks like. And we can go ahead and click on Chinaris right over here, which is going to load the map. And as we can see, it kind of shows all the different cars around the map along with heli crashes and then if we see down here we have me and it also tells you what's in the hand so it has the weapon and then what their current HP is as well. And then if we click on the server tab here we do get a bit of extra information than we do normally get without having the plugin. So it tells us the server FPS so we can kind of know how that's performing and it also tells us a bit more about like the weather and the time as well. I believe the time already showed but not the weather. So let's just go ahead and hop down here. And just to demonstrate the thing that shows kind of like stuff being built, we're going to go ahead and go into here. And we're going to find a temp. And now that we've found a suitable spot for it, we'll go ahead and place it. And we have our tent placed and everything. And if we go ahead and go back over to the control panel, and we click on live feed, it'll say that we have built a large tent. And if we scroll into here, we can see where it was built. And that's about it. It just kind of gives you some basic additional information and this is just the very basic installing the add-on and that's it. There are some more advanced case uses and stuff like that which there'll be some further videos about later on. But for now, this is kind of the base installation. And that's really about it. It's possible I forgot something or any sort of mistake or anything like that. So corrections will always be in the video description and the pinned comment. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the video or join the Discord server which is always in the video description. Joining the Discord server allows you to directly DM me. There is also a channel for general support where myself and others can help you resolve issues you may be having. A link to that is in the video description below. And if you have any video suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. And on that, have a good one.